What is going on, all my most valuable poets, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to talk about five of my top books I read in 2021. This is going to be a poetry book video. I do want to say as a disclaimer, I read a lot of poetry. It's usually a lot of poetry online. It's a lot of poetry criticism also online, as well as book reviews. And this these past two years, I actually read at my job at Cavan Carey Press through a bunch of manuscripts for us to determine certain manuscripts that were going to get published in the year 2022 and 2023. So there's a lot of reading and then on top of that there's also a bunch of poetry that I do with my Patreon folks um, and then our workshops from month to month which my workshop is going to be happening very soon this month middle of the month. You can catch that deal still right here. It's $25 a workshop or if you use the coupon code YouTube you can actually save big so please do that and if you're catching this later in the year month to month the the sale is going to actually become even better because as the months are less obviously the prices of the entire course are going to be less. So I have five books that I'm going to mention in this video. I'm going to say why I like them and I'm going to say why you, my precious YouTube audience, might like them as well. The first book is When Wolves Become Birds by Elise Versella. Um, I personally liked this book because I felt like it was a, a great entry point uh, into poetry. I felt like it was really easy to understand the narrative. It was really easy to feel for that speaker and to get invested in the stories um, and follow this speaker while it's traversing uh, womanhood and the power of being a woman and some of the stuff that women would go through in terms of love and identity and finding their place in the world. That's why I thought this was really cool. I think it's an important book and it's a necessary book, especially for teenage girls as well. Now, why would you like this book? You actually might like this book because you might find something else in this book. Uh, Elise Rosella talks a lot about mythology and she calls upon mythology uh, in order to kind of resonate with the speaker and resonate with their audience. I mentioned in a lot of my poetry classes this quote from Neil Gaiman saying that mythology is the compost of literature, meaning that you could keep recycling that organic matter into different things and different literature and all those stories that have existed for centuries build upon themselves and Elise Versella is someone who is adding to that. You can purchase this book from Golden Dragonfly Press or Amazon and you can find Elise Versella right here. This book is Things to Pack on the Way to Everywhere by Dr. Grisel Y. Acosta. She is another, another dear friend of mine in the New Jersey poetry community. Uh, she is super smart, she's super talented, and she's super involved in Afro-Latinidad and social justice. This particular book is her first collection, and I think it is her first collection of poetry. I think she also has a book of essays, but this poetry collection is Knockout. I personally love this book because because she is talking about the things that, that make sense to me in terms of what growing up as a Latina or, or Latinx person in the community and all those different mixings of intermixing culture and finding culture and what does that mean and what does race mean and what does ethnicity mean. Now you might like this book for that reason or a couple of other reasons. Uh, she talks a lot about music, right? There's a lot of uh, electronic dance music and punk music in here. So there's musicality there. There's a hybrid form. So sometimes she's writing in kind of like prose pieces or other times she's, it's a bit more experimental rather than the regular verse poem. So this poem, this book is particularly fun. And I will also mention the size of this book in comparison to Elise Versella's. So Elise Versella's would be kind of like a regular trade copy kind of book. So you're gonna know that it's mostly left marginated. It has stanza formation and verse form. When you start getting other sized books such as this, you can expect the pages to be different. You can expect uh, poems to be here and here and really exploring uh, the avenues of those. So if you're ever looking for poetry books and you see books of uh, different sizes, pick them up because they're going to be an interesting read. You can find the Y Acosta's book at Get Fresh Books, which I talk to them on this channel a lot, or through the small press distributor, SPD. You can also follow Grisel Y Acosta here. This book is Brooklyn Antediluvian by Patrick Rizal. Is the last poet I'm going to mention that is from the New Jersey area. He's from the New Jersey, New York area. Right now he's a teacher uh, at Rutgers Camden. And I love this book, uh, oh, not only because it's a great collection, but Patrick Rizal himself is a part of one of those authors that I muse over. I that He's a part of my literary canon. When I'm writing and I'm stepping into bodies of different folks, Patrick is one of those people I'm thinking of in terms of voice and in terms 
terms of, of poetic craft and in terms of crafting stories. Uh, if you look at some of these poems, if you look at some of these poems, they are long pieces. And it's very much in a narrative form. And I like to storytell, so I usually kind of default to folks that write those longer pieces. But if you're not into longer poetry, he also has shorter poems here. Um, I would recommend this book to anyone who, again, likes music, but also um, is exploring location and place, as in, you know, Brooklyn Antediluvian, and the ideas of grief. There, there's some grief in here. There's also grief um, in things to pack on the way to everywhere as well. So if you're exploring those different ideas, these are great books to turn to. You can find this book at Percy Books. You can also find this book at major retailers. He's a pretty big deal. Um, and I'm sure it's on Amazon also. Oh, oh, shameless plug. I'm not sponsored by bookshop.org, but bookshop.org is an amazing place and it's an alternative to Amazon. All major press distributors actually distribute through that place as well. And as being as a one-stop shop for a bunch of different publications in a bunch of different places the authors get a little bit more of a cut from their books hot take authors don't really make that much money from their books they can make anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar if they're lucky sometimes a bit more if they're publishing through a publisher that's why a lot of folks end up self-publishing or that's why a lot of poets say that they're working poets they have other jobs they have full-time identities elsewhere because that's what pays the bills but this pays their heart Okay, I'm moving on from New Jersey, I swear. Now I'm taking it to the West Coast with Shadow Boxing by Joseph Rios by Omnidon Press. Omnidon Press is one of my favorite small uh, publishers right now or indie publishers. It's really interesting because you call these places small, but they've published and they've been in the world sometimes for like 20, uh, 30 years and they have a big, a big, big, big roster, but they just have a small, small, small uh, economy, right? They don't make that much money. They basically break even on all of these books. So that's why they're called small publishers. If you want me to talk about big publishers and small publishers, drop a trophy down below and I'll kind of make a video about tiers of publishing. For Joseph Rios, I really like the structure of this book. This is another, he's a contemporary of mine. So another good thing to think about are contemporaries, people that are around your same age, your same level that are writing in the kind of the same spaces. He's writing on the West Coast of some of the things I'm writing about. He's writing about his hometown. I'm writing about my hometown. So I turn to books like these to study in order to see who, how's, how are they doing it right, right? Joseph Rios has also run prizes for things such as shadow boxing. So those are the things you want to look at. This book is going to be great for you if you like boxing. Um, actually, the, the table of contents is outlined in rounds and then finally the 16th round at the end. Uh, this is also a bit of a hybrid book in a way that there are some play style poems here where he has multiple speakers speaking to one another and it's written out like a script. He also talks about self-fulfilling prophecies and having different identity politics of oneself and kind of talking to themselves, kind of like the man in the mirror kind of thing. So this might be a good book too if you're exploring that inner speaker and you're exploring space. I recommend you getting this book from On The Dawn Press, bookshop.com, and yeah, those two places. You can follow Joseph Rios right here at Josefo Bear, which Josefo, if you read this book, is actually a character in this book. Lastly, we have the Reinhardt Frames by my brother, Chesuayo Panza. Chesuayo is from Zambia, but he grew up in Chicago, and then he was in Jersey for a little while in the MFA program with me, and he was one of my really, really close friends with uh, Antonio Lopez, who also published a book, Hentification. I'll put Hentification right here as an extra bonus. And I also put this picture here of baby Chesuayo, baby Antonio, and baby Dimitri on graduation day. Aside from him getting me through my MFA program, literally, like, I wrote about how much he helped me in a letter I sent to him uh, when I sent him my, my book every 1st and 15th. Um, like, him and Antonio really grounded me and helped uh, kind of level me and helped me, helped me find my voice through that system. If you want kind of like a, I guess like a tear-jerky kind of story time of how they kind of helped me got to get through the program in a couple of ways, let me know down below by putting a speaker um, or a a heart 
Yeah, let's do a heart. If you do a heart down below, um, maybe I could do a story time about that. <clears throat> but the reason I like Reinhardt Frame so much is because, again, you're gonna see this with me. It's exploring different avenues of how you can write a story. So the Reinhardt Frames is actually kind of like a book of ekphrasis, but it's an ekphrasis off film, as you might remember from some of my other videos, or if you're in one of my YouTube memberships or my Patreon memberships, you'll see that sometimes I throw ekphrasis assignments out, and those are when you're looking at a picture picture or an image and you're writing a poem off of it. But this one was actually done through film and it goes through a bunch of different frames, obviously, you know, in the Reinhardt frames. And it kind of paints this picture and puts together this dialogue of identity and of discovery. Um, and even thinking of uh, like diasporic connections and what that means to be black, to be African, right? So that's, that's a really dope, that's a really dope uh, idea. This book, I will preface in saying, is a dense read. Like, you're definitely going to want to read this book looking into the notes in the back. And that is also a good hint, too. At the back of poetry books, there are usually notes, and the notes subsidize information for you for this book. So for me to really understand this book, like, this dude is smart. I had to read the notes. I had to read the blurbs. I had to read introductions. I had to read book reviews on this uh, in order to get the full breadth of this book. And I'm really proud of his genius, and I'm really proud that I can actually call him my friends and this won the Silverman first book prize for African poets so good for him you can find this book from the University of Nebraska Press as well as on bookshop thank you everyone for listening to what I was saying about these books and what I thought my top books were in 2021 uh, as I did mention I read a lot of other things uh, online uh, some of those are in my free resources which was another video that can that can be put up right there uh, buy books books are important to supporting authors you can also support authors by sharing their poems online, uh, by following them on Instagram, and just sending them messages and telling them you're really appreciating the work that they're doing. Please tell me what are some great books you read in 2021 or great poems you read in 2021. I'd love to hear from you. I'm getting back to everyone responding. Thank you for commenting. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit on that notification bell. Share this video with a friend to please invest in that poetic vibratory freedom. It is 2022. Let's keep it going. As always, I will see you all in the next class.